Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to continue my four part series on how to use TradeEdix to find notable tickers using their vast amount of Discord and website tools to begin putting together a watch list that you can filter down and execute on the following morning. Once you've used these tools to build your initial list, it's extremely important you research them further to only pick the best of the best. I put out a video on July 14th, 2022 explaining how to develop this conviction. Once the list is narrowed down to one to four of your best choices, make sure you watch the video I put out on July 11th 2022 that goes into how you can execute these trade ideas like a professional trader. Before we get started, if you'd like to get a 10% discount for trade edicts, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. You'll also find referral links for TradingView and Top Step Funded Trader programs that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. So in this particular video, I want to talk about all of the amazing scanning tools that TradeEdix offers for finding trade ideas. And the first one I want to start with is going to be Scanny. Now, these trading tools are amazing. These scanning tools are pretty amazing because they help you combine both technical analysis and fundamental analysis in terms of market caps and other fundamentals. You can even do PE ratios, profit margin, short interest. To, uh, so it allows you to look at those fundamentals quickly, apply technical strategies to narrow it down, and then uh, you can you can even pick your favorite uh, technical strategies that you might have. Like uh, as many of you know, if you watch my channel, I'm a big volume guy. I love volume price analysis. It is a, an incredible strategy for trading, and I hope that if you've learned from my volume price analysis series, that you've had great success with it as well. But it's also not the only strategy, and price action is also very important. And Scanny can help us narrow that down. So you can, you can, as I mentioned, you can filter out market cap, right? So like if we want it greater than one billion, and then we looked at hot sectors, which I mentioned in previous videos, uh, part one of my series, I talked about how you can scan for the hottest sectors. So like let's say right now technology has been hot, we only wanted to see tech plays, and then. We can narrow down other things here. I'm not going to in this case, but then we only want to look at plays that are optionable because we're focused on option trading here. And then you can start looking at your favorite strategy set setups. And actually, I've actually used this tool to learn about strategies that I wasn't otherwise familiar with. And if you're looking at these and you're wondering what these are, I highly recommend Googling them, checking them out, see if it might interest you, maybe do some back testing with it. What, some of my favorites though, are playing levels and or anchored VWAP can sometimes be useful trend line support things like that so we can see names that are getting some trend line support and you can actually hover over it and you can get a chart and get an idea of what they're referring to in terms of the trend line just for a quick look you can also click this little icon here which will pull up the stock dashboard and which is useful. I actually prefer to look at the options dashboard when I'm building my conviction, but I never neglect the stock dashboard either. And you can check out that video I mentioned that I filmed on July 14th for more information there. Uh, now, and, and another, another really cool thing you can do, so like let's say we didn't want that trend line support, let's take that off. Uh, for me, I love looking at volume plays, and if you've watched my volume price analysis series, in particular the one about volume profile, you'll, and, or if you've watched my trade recaps, you'll see oftentimes I talk about a volume ledge, or in this case it's called a volume shelf. And you can actually look at plays that are right on a volume shelf, and there's a concept called a volume shelf launch pad, where when you're going with trend, and we're coming into a high volume node area, and we reach the top of it, we reach a shelf and we reject off of it and then we come back to the bottom shelf and we start moving up that can be considered a volume shelf launch pad that might take us through to the next volume area and so we can actually look at that and see see plays automatically that fit that criteria that we might want to play off of and you can see even crowd here i mean is it looks like a trend line we don't have volume profile on this chart so uh what i would highly recommend doing is going into your favorite charting platform and we'll just do that real quick. Actually, we'll we'll look at we'll look at crowd together here. So let me make this bigger and we'll pull up crowd and we'll see if we can determine what they were. So you, this is the chart that we saw. And so if we're looking at the volume shelf launch pad now, in this case, these these areas where these high volume nodes stick out and then drop off into gaps is is considered a volume shelf. So not the point where it's sticking out the most 
but the point where we see it drop off into these these volume gaps are considered volume shelves and essentially what can happen is and it will pull down into a gap it will it will hold because there's no volume coming in to help push it down further and then it will actually start moving back up which you can see which was happening on this daily candle and then once it gets once it pulls down and starts moving back up through these high volume nodes we get to this next gap where in theory price would stop however if we're going with trend it will sort of be a launch pad and will just rip through the gap into the next high volume area which is exactly what happened if you look at this daily candle so if we just plot where these this this volume gap starts and ends so we can see just based on this candle it pulled down into this volume gap now the volume gap would end down here if it actually broke through the other side of this volume gap then it would it would start going the other way as we move through this high volume area and we can see that the, this high volume ledge this high volume shelf ends right here and just take note of these three lines I'm marking on the daily. And then lastly, the top of the volume gap is right here into that next volume zone. So this was that launch pad. And so bottom line is the bottom of the gap, which means that we're going down at this point. This is our the second line between the, the bottom line and this line is the volume gap where we would expect to see a hold. This is the, the top of the first shelf, which means if we get through this line, then we know that we're going all the way up to this line. And so uh, we can see if we drop down to the three minute. Uh, so here's our four lines. This was that bottom area where if we broke down here and kept going, we'd actually be looking for a bearish play. But what, end, what ended up happening, and let me actually just minimize the intraday volume profiles to make this price action easier to see. But we open, we move higher, right? So we move, this is this is the bottom of the shelf, this is the top. We try to get through that top gap and we reject, right? And so we come down, we come down through the bottom of that high volume area that we saw on the daily chart, come down into the volume gap we hold because volume falls off. No one, there's no more sellers that are gonna continue pushing this down. We see wicks forming, meaning that buyers are taking back into control again. They come up into the high volume area, fall out of it again, come back up, fall out of it again. But notice each time they're making higher lows. And if you're a pattern trader, you'll see right away what this is. But uh, just to point out, this is an ascending triangle here. And what this typically means is that every time sellers push us down, we're weakening. So every time sellers push us down, they can't push us down as far as they did previously. So they're weakening, buyers come in, they left sell they fall off again sellers fail to push us lower buyers come in and push us up and now at this point we not only have we broken out of this ascending triangle because sellers have weakened but now we're breaking out now we still fail at the top of that high volume area but but now we stay within it and this is where the volume sh the volume shelf launch pad forms and at this point once we're in it and honestly once this trend trend line was holding and we're coming out of this gap you can really look for entries at any point but and we even continue actually holding this trend line and so you could really enter off this trend line and this uses as a launch pad and once we get up here once we've built up this momentum you can actually see just how quickly we move through that gap and then boom we're right into that high volume area again and then now the question is okay we shouldn't we shouldn't ever see us break below this line again because this would be back into the next high volume area if we do then we might be looking for puts but if we hold within this zone and then we do that same sort of behavior where we push up through the next high volume area and let me just turn on the volume profile again so we can see that then that essentially means that we could at least expect to break through this next gap and get all the way up to 182 40 which would be huge so anyway I wouldn't have otherwise seen this on CrowdStrike if it wasn't for Scanny. And I kind of went off a little bit there, but I just wanted to show you how you can use it to point out your favorite strategies, and then you can assess them on the chart to see, okay, is this actual a viable strategy? And a lot of people like volatility plays with volatility expansion. I see a lot of talk about inside bars, which are actually really nice. You can say, see inside day, inside week bars, more complex type of bar setups with 
candlesticks inside inside bars are very very potent actually for a technical strategy so i recommend looking into those if you're not familiar we can even look for bull hammers dojis uh, all these candles i take into account every single day when i'm trading i always pair them with volume because a low volume doji is nowhere near as powerful as a high volume doji a high volume doji typically nothing in trading is guaranteed but typically means reversal right so if we're looking for reversals and you know we have to might have to drop off some of these other filters or maybe change to a different sector or whatever to find these dojis which um, nothing's coming up here but essentially you can have it look for these candles automatically for you which is really nice uh, there's also chart patterns if you're a big pattern person i'm not a personally a big pattern person i see them all the time i see them work i see them fail a lot of it comes down to helping you read price action it's more important to not play the pattern itself but understand what the pattern is telling you when combined with things like volume like we just did for that ascending triangle but it's nice because you can have it point out a specific pattern then you can assess it further you can even look at gaps and divergences i know there's a lot of people that make a lot that have a lot of success with playing gaps uh playing rsi and macd divergence i'm not a big lagging indicator fan but i've seen divergences work before and people can certainly use them to their advantage um, there's some other cool stuff like high volume changes. I always really like to look at, um, there's a TTM squeeze, which is, which is, a, a, a very popular indicator on trading view. And I think it's on other platforms, but this is like, has to do with squeeze momentum. You can even look at cup and handles, uh, things like that. And you just need to make sure that you, when you're switching these, you need to turn off because it's, it's unlikely that you'll have multiple of these apply, but Scanny is an incredible tool for pairing this stuff together and I highly recommend it when you're if you're if you're into looking for maybe you're, you don't want to use tradey flow or bullseye you want to have like tech scan for technical setups automatically scanny is certainly the tool for you so with that being said another great tool is going to be flash which is uh, uh again this goes with technical patterns except it's laid out a bit differently so let's go to flash here and what's interesting about this tool is that they'll call they'll, so they're going to scan everything for you and then they're going to call out specific uh so like we're seeing flag the specific signals on specific time frames right so when we're looking at scanning that was particularly on the daily time frame but if you're looking for more intraday scans you can actually look for okay we're seeing uh 9 20 ma cross on the five minute or engulfing candle on the 30 minute which actually can be quite interesting now we also need to make sure we, we still, again, and I mentioned this in my other parts of these videos, but we always do need to do our assessment in terms of looking at options flow dashboard and things like that to make sure that it is that it is indeed like looking at net flow and the whale, what the whales are doing and other flow sentiment as well as looking at the charts itself. It's very important, but this can actually give you a point out plays that you might have otherwise missed, and then you can start researching the best ones based off of conviction you built up by going into the options dashboard or dark pools or whatever else to build that conviction one thing that's cool here too is you can actually pair this with some of their other tools so you can pair this with dark pool transactions tradey flow orders above 25 we can look at uh, uh low flow runners which is kind of cool different strategy combination so uh you, you see a lot of the same stuff that you actually saw on scanning but the difference here is that this happens on across all these different time frames and uh, there's a lot of really interesting data to point out here so uh definitely give that a look if you're if you're doing some intraday trading and you can assess build conviction quickly because you're you've exp have good experience with using the other tools to do so and you're good with technical analysis flash is a great tool to use in conjunction with that stuff now uh, opentra or yeah opentra i'm not quite sure how to pronounce it but this is actually a very compelling tool as well and this is actually will help us find volume plays off of the flow so rather than technical analysis on the chart we can actually use flow analysis to look for things like volume over open interest crosses which means if volume's exceeding open interest, that means that they, potentially a lot of new contracts could be getting opened up there. We can look at uh, 5x net premiums. There's all kinds of different, you can look at cheap contracts, which is nice. Unusually large amounts of contracts being purchased, right? So we can see with Uber here, end of day. And actually, 
The, this is incredibly powerful looking at these call or put contract scans so we can see Uber end of day we had a whole bunch of unusually large contracts coming across and so the net premium which is big for Uber 740,000 especially when you consider and that was done in three orders this would certainly be a good one to look at further to see if we can build conviction around I, I really like looking at the unusually large setups and then also looking at like if uh, uh if there's a large amount of um uh contracts being purchased like 25 plus or 5x and actually again we need to make sure that we turn off certain filters and then you also have your normal filters where you can have minimum uh price bid ask uh minimum volume things like that so uh this is really you can look at those golden sweeps we talked about where we have um plays that uh where it's exceeding one million dollars in sweeps and which it doesn't look like there is anything there on these scans but again this is uh th these are really interesting because it can help you if you're if you don't like looking at live flow this can really help you narrow things down very easily and there's just so many type of uh, scans already built out for you and then of course we have our hottest chains which we can also look at on the discord which is very useful those, these Discord commands were recently added in, uh, but they've they've been here. Uh, this is Op Open Opentra, uh, I believe that's how you say. It. Incredibly valuable dashboard, incredibly valuable scanner, I should say. Um, we also have Profit, which let me pull this up. So Profit is a swing AI. So if you're not into day trading, intraday trading. You can use this scanner, and again, it has a lot of the same stuff that we've already talked about in terms of filters. You can also search specific uh, plays if you want, but this is useful if you're looking for good swing plays and you want to build conviction around those swing plays. You can do so. Of course, it has the normal links and everything that you can click. Um, I haven't been real big into swinging plays recently, uh, especially with all the volatility, but uh, you can also see the confidence, right? So the AI does have a confidence level, right? Not everything is going to be, every play we recommend is 100% confident. That's kind of BS talk there. And it's nice that it shows you right away how confident it is in that play working out. So you can just really go for the best of the best. Uh, and you can look at high relative volume is something that I always like looking at, especially if I'm looking at swing plays. I need to make sure that as the days go on, uh, that that volume is increasing to keep me in that play otherwise I start getting concerned about reversals and then I and it's just something I always like paying attention to and I never really like taking low volume plays uh, for bid ask pr contracts things like that but anyway uh, uh, there, there's a lot of cool filters you can do here if you're into swing plays and then this is more of a notable entry I know or uh, excuse me uh, uh, just an honorable mention I know a lot of people might not play crypto, but they do have crypto scanners as well, which uh, again give you a lot of a lot of options here for looking for technical setups and things like that, and high volume plays uh, to to make decisions. If you enjoy trading crypto, uh, I I like trading futures, I like trading options, and I like trading crypto futures. So this dashboard has definitely certainly been useful, and I use it the same way that I actually use Scanny, except it's used for crypto. So certainly worth mentioning there there's a lot of scan options and uh, i mentioned this about a thousand times in this series but once you find these plays i do not recommend jumping in unless you first build conviction and then once you build your conviction if you need help executing these plays make sure you check out the using options flow with the tro pro trading framework that will help you execute them and uh and then uh, of course we want to try to narrow if we have a watch list of 15 tickers we want to try to narrow that down to only the best of the best in this video building the best watch list using options flow data talks about building that super precise watch list based off of all the conviction you form from all of the other trade edX tools so anyway i hope you learned something here and you found this information useful and i really appreciate you watching if you have any questions feel free to reach out in discord trade edX discord or in the comments and uh and i appreciate your time